Lacey Everett here with Minds in Motion. Please subscribe to the Minds in Motion YouTube channel. It is free, it's easy. You just click a button and then you're done. It helps to build our Minds in Motion community and build a, a huge support network for you. And if this video impacts you, send it to others so they can reap of the benefits as well. Today's guest is Deanna Hattar, who was a student athlete from Chapman University in Orange, California. Got her Bachelor's of Arts in Psychology and a minor in Sociology from Chapman while successfully competing on the Chapman's water polo team. Prior to getting her bachelor's from Chapman University, she received her AA degree from Fullerton College in behavioral and self-development, and she is now the water polo coach at Fullerton College. Anna competed on the women's water polo team where she was a two-time conference, regional, and state champion. Deanna is currently pursuing her PsyD, her doctorate in clinical psychology at Loma Linda University and training for the next Olympics. Deanna is going to give us the best advice for athletes, student athletes, coaches. We're going to talk about self-esteem, self-compassion, what makes a good team player, what qualities coaches look for in team captains, what her beliefs are about team captains. We talk about a lot of research in sports psychology and she gives us wonderful tools of how to work under pressure about what the best part of competing is and how to maintain that motivation within you when you feel down and when you don't feel like competing anymore. We also discuss self-care and how important that is. Deanna is truly such an admirable person. Really important topic we discuss is about distress tolerance and how to regulate our emotions and become comfortable with the discomfort that we feel while we're playing in our sport and just in our everyday lives. All right, let's go meet Deanna. Hi, Deanna. Hi, how are you? I am good. I am so, so grateful that we get to talk to you today. You are an impeccable role model for those who are going through college and water polo and sports. And I thought you could talk about how you came into psych, what your interests are in psychology. You're an up and coming therapist. So I'm like rooting for you. And thank you, thank you. Yes, I know how it goes. Also about water polo and what you're doing with water polo now and what you did with water polo. Yeah. Um, so I recently just graduated from Chapman and I'm going to start at Loma Linda University's behavioral health program, studying to get my PsyD in clinical psychology and water polo wise right now, training to go pro. I actually got really lucky. Um, the one kind of good thing that came out of COVID was I have two extra seasons of eligibility to play at another school. So I'm taking a year gap and then I'm planning on going to go play somewhere um, for another two years and then train to like, of course, improve. And um, also at the moment, I'm coaching at Fullerton College. I'm the assistant women's water polo coach. So I'm doing that right now. Um, I got into water polo. I started in 2017. Uh, no, sorry, not 2014. In high school, I started. I played four sports. I did water polo, swim, cross country, and track and field. It was an amazing experience. I loved like being able to go on teams and like just work hard and like just try to like improve in whatever they gave me to do, like as an event or um, just like running with my teammates and cross country and whatnot. Water polo stuck with me. That was the one sport that like really I felt like a passion for and it like like heart felt like it was something for me. So after high school, I continued at Fullerton College from 2017 to 2019. I did two years water polo, two years swim. And then I went on to a four-year university from 2019 to 2021 at Chapman University, where I played another two years um, just water polo. So uh, doing that, and now I'm coaching while training to go pro. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. No big deal. Just throw <laughs> all that out there. No big deal. You go, girl. Thank, thank you. Thank early. you. 
that's a lot of work too. You know, honestly, like if you have a passion for something and you enjoy doing it, it's not like as hard as people would assume or see it as to be. And I so agree with that. Even right now, being in grad school for psychology for myself, it's almost easier. Weirdly, I was an undergrad because it's something I love and I'm more willing to do the readings or I'm more, you know, you're more interested. And yeah, like it's something you enjoy and you have a passion for and you're interested in. So it's something that like people are like, oh my God, you're in grad school and you're working and you're doing this and that. And it's like, yeah, but like I'm enjoying every moment I'm doing, like everything I'm doing and I'm enjoying the moment like while I'm doing it. So like- Uh That is a wonderful mindset, Dan. I think that's so important because that's what it's really about. You know, at the end of the day, it's what you about what you love. And I, I can relate with dance. Like you mentioned with water polo, that was your sport. Dance was mine. And it felt like it wasn't really work because you enjoyed it. And yeah. the, team, the, the relationships you make. And once I started getting paid for it, I almost forgot that you get paid for it when you become professional because it's, it's something that you love so much. So that's, that speaks so much. Yeah. So like you, and it's in whatever you do, it doesn't even have to be sports. It can be um, whatever degree you're studying in. It could be volunteering somewhere. It could be honestly anything you do in life that you enjoy and it's seen as a job to someone, but to you, it's like, oh, I finally get to like go and like practice or like I'm done with class. I get to go practice or I'm done with work. Like I get to go like do like volunteer here. Like it could be literally anything as long as you enjoy it. Like we live in such a stressful life of like workflow, 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 like have to be here at a certain time, have to be there and like driving consistently and in traffic. And it's like, it's worth it as long as you're happy and you're enjoying what you're doing. Yes. Have there ever been any moments, Deanna, when you have felt like it became work instead of happiness? And how did you get out of that? Did you have to remind yourself like, okay, wait, I love this. Remember? Or how did you, how did you get through those moments? I'm just curious. Um, so yeah, I've had like a couple of moments, um, where I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I don't think this is for me anymore. Or like, wait, like this is getting so stressful. It's not like as fun as it was in high school where it's just like, Hey, everybody gets to play kind of thing. Like in my high school, our division wasn't that high. So it wasn't like division one, two or three, we were division seven. So it was kind of like everyone plays and gets the experience, you know? So when I got into college and the competition got higher, whether it was community college or um, Chapman University, uh, the competition and like the expectations got higher and it started getting stressful and like overwhelming, not just physically, but mentally, like you're waking up at like 430 a.m. and you're having like four hour practices Monday through Saturday. We have games every week and tournaments every week. And so there were times where like, oh my God, like I don't get to hang out with my friends. This is getting stressful. Like, I don't know if it's for me, but like, then I look at my teammates and it's like, when we win together, when we're traveling together, building those memories, when I'm at practice and like, I do something I've been struggling in and I finally see the result. being with the coaching staff, like the coaching staff is such an important impact in like a team those factors are what really helped me with just getting out of that mindset and that little funk I was in into like going into playing because like going into practice, the coaches aren't going to be like, Oh, Hey, Diana, so you need to fix it. Like they're yelling at you. They're like, there's some coaches, they're throwing trash cans, breaking clipboards, like, and it's because they have expectations for you because they know how good you could be. They know how much you could improve and where you could become and where you can go. So, um, those like little things, like remembering that and knowing you're not in it alone, like you're swimming a swim set and you're like dying and you feel like your heart is going to come out of your chest, your teammate right next to you swimming that swim set, they're going through it with you. They're doing the same thing you're doing and it's not easy on them either. And in water polo, sometimes like it, like you can make, um, excuses for yourself in your head while you're swimming. Cause like when you're swimming, you're just, so it's like, you're in your head, it's you, And then when you're playing polo, it's like with your teammates. So when you're swimming and you're like, well, I'm shorter than her. So like, she's longer than me. That's why she made the swim set or she's like more stronger than me, like, or she's more petite. So she doesn't have to carry a lot of muscle and weight all up here. Sometimes like at the end of the day, like in my opinion, 
Um, when you're at practice, it's 90% physical, 10% mental. But when you go to a game, it's 90% mental, 10% physical. So you get me? Yeah. So like, um, it's like those things, like you really just got to remind yourself, like why you're here. Do you really enjoy it? Like, is it for you? If it's not for you, you will know, like you will know, it's not going to be a question in your head. You're not going to be thinking about it. It's going to be like, you know what? I'm done. This is my like stopping zone. Like I'm done here. So yes, you will know. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it's hard sometimes people don't really listen to their own feelings and emotions. And once you actually notice them, you go, oh, wait, I'm feeling this way about this. Or, oh, wait, I'm feeling this way. And really like listening to our intuition, some people phrase it. It's so powerful. Yes. And then like, sometimes people just like forget about like, it's like, when you start going to schools, like coming out of high school or community college, and you're applying to all these schools and these coaches are like, you're so amazing. I want you or like, you're going to play so much here. And it's like, you get lost. You're like, Oh my God, like, I don't know where to go. You will know once you enter that campus, like, you'll be like, you know what, this is the campus for me. Like, that's what happened with me with community college. I was like, I don't know what program to go to. They're two both so good. I met with the first coach. I was like, this is for me. When I met with the second coach, I was like, no, 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 this is it. Like, this is my school. This is the program and like best decision I've ever made in my life. So, yeah. yeah. I'm so excited for you. And I'm so grateful for you that you got that experience and that you, Thank listened, you. That you listened to your body. You listened to your gut. With emotions because you're, you're in a high pressured environment in, on the, in the pool and the water polo games. And, and like you mentioned, the coaches are like breaking clipboards, doing all these things. And it's a lot of pressure. So I'm curious how you deal with being under pressure a lot. If there's tools that you give, could give to others, because I mean, if you're in any sport in general, or just a human in general, you're going to endure pressure at some point in your life. So I thought we could talk about that. Yeah, definitely. So like, pressure, in my opinion, like if you know how to cope with it and you know yourself and your body, like everyone's going to cope with it differently. Mm -hmm. Like I could handle more pressure than another person, or they could handle more pressure than what I can handle. Like everyone has their different meter and level. So it could be different for everyone. But for me, what really helped me was knowing that my teammates had my back, knowing that my coaches, they all had my back, like they got mad, but I know that they have my back at the end of the day. And knowing like we're all together, whether you're in a team sport or like track and field, you're training or like you're running individually or cross country, like you still have your teammates, you still have your coaches at the end of the day. So like, um, knowing that, knowing that I had someone to rely on, if I made a mistake on defense or offense, like knowing they'll have my back is something that really helped me to like ease the pressure. And like knowing that, I attended practice every single day. I did not go through the motions. I actually like went 110% at every practice. Yes, we have bumps in the road and we have hard days. That's life. But like knowing that I went to practice every day and I gave it my all and we practiced this, knowing I could do it and what my abilities are is like another thing that like made me ease the pressure when we're like in a high tense game and like everyone's going to have different experiences. You don't have to be the person who experienced something to like learn from it. You can visualize or like view the experience that happened and you could still learn from it. Learn from your teammates' mistakes. Learn from the other team's mistakes. So like, it's just knowing that there's so many ways to like, um, basically improve. And there's so many ways to like learn from like different environments in different ways to like become better and to improve is like something that really helped me to ease the pressure because like, I'll be defending someone and they made a mistake. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. Like, you know, so like just knowing that like, okay, there are ways to like practice and like there are ways to learn from mistakes and gain experience that like, it really did ease the pressure. Cause that like certain times when like the pressure was high, I'm like, I already know like what I'm doing, but like in a humble way. Yes. Yeah. Anna, you, I'm just over here like preach. You're saying everything so perfectly. And I'm getting giddy over here because I can relate 100%. And I agree yeah. with everything you are saying. And it is such impeccable advice because Thank there's, you. there's three things that you mentioned that I can take from that and think, gosh, how important this is for others to hear is that 
under pressure, you really, you one, normalize it and understand that everyone's probably feeling this way. And you have your team to back you up. Like you mentioned, like you're not alone and realizing that and realizing that you're in it together. You're all in it together. You all have the same coach. You all experience things differently, but you're in it together. There's a commonality there, which could help those negative feelings and pressure feelings to subside. And another part was knowing that you work so hard, every practice, every game, and you learn from everyone that you watch and you really listen to your coaches, knowing that I think would help subside the pressure feelings as well. Because when you're going in that game and you feel that pressure, you can go, oh, yes, I feel pressure. And I put in the work. So you know, kind of like I put in so much work and I really try my best. And as long as you're yeah. trying to pass, so on. And, and then that third thing was watching others and learning from others. I love that one. And do you have, Deanna, any water polo tips with technique tips and skills that you can give others? Yeah. Um, first of all, like the number one tip and the rule in my book is don't ever stop and like improving. There is always high expectations everywhere you go. So like, there is no like, there's no bar or meter in saying, Oh, I reached the top, there is no top, like, that's what like the best Olympians in the world. That's why they're playing. And like, they're the best Olympians. It's because they never stop improving. They never stop like, they're the best people in the world. That's why they're at like the Olympics, because they're the best. Yet they don't stop improving because they know they could like, keep pushing themselves. Don't look over the little things. So like in water polo, we're shooting all the time. We have a ball in our hand. We're egg beating. We're treading water. Don't look at like the little things and like blindside them. You always have room to improve whether it's your shot, whether it's an egg beating, whether it's like looking at the power behind your shot, um, defense, offense, like you could improve everywhere. And like that goes with being said, whether it's in school or whether it's in water polo or in your sport, there's always somewhere where you could improve and you could even look at it in a different perspective, not improve personally, but let's say you, um, your coach puts you and your other teammate in all the time together. Like he throws you, like when there's rotations going on in games, he'll throw you guys in together because that's how the rotation goes. You guys like balance each other out. Let's say my friend, my teammate, Sarah, she struggles in a certain aspect in the game. I'm going to really focus on that aspect so I can improve it. So I could cover her back when she has that mistake. That's a smart athlete right there. That's, that's more than the physical, like you mentioned the mental part. There's always room for improvement and just don't ever stop. Um, like the bar is going to keep going up wherever you go and wherever you play. And like in general, like the more we like grow as a world And as people, like the competition level is always getting higher and higher. So don't ever be satisfied or content where you are. Because like, at the end of the day, like, there's always going to be someone better than me personally. And that's just the fact. So just never stop improving, never stop working hard. Never stop improving, never stop working hard. Yes. And like you said, also accepting that, okay, that's okay that someone's better than me, or that's okay because how else am I supposed to grow? I need exactly. to look up to, and I need coaches to tell me what I'm doing wrong or right and things like that for sure. Exactly. And like, let's say like you're not the best person on your team. I was not the best person on my team. And that is a fact. Like, In water polo, like I was an average player. I was not the best person. I was not the worst person. I was just average. And um, and same thing with like cross country and track and field. Like I knew where I was strong in. So I really emphasized on those little parts that I was like strong in. My endurance when we did track and field, my endurance was like my strong suit. So like I really emphasized on that. So like the one thing is like you don't have to be the best person on your team. Like my like top 10 like things like make sure that you could like do even though you're not the best person is having a work ethic having good energy at practice doing extra you could be doing good at something but do extra um your energy your attitude having passion for the sport being on time to practice showing up to practice like 
you don't have to be the best person on the team to like improve. You could Im- do little things that will help you or your teammates. You could be like the player on the team that's just working so hard at practice to make your teammates better, even though you know you're not going to play in the game, but you're making your teammates better so you could advance as a team. As a team, which says, speaks so much to being such a good team player. And- exactly. That's like the number one thing I believe in like everything we do as humans is to be humble in whatever you do Mm -hmm. to be humble. Cause there's no reason to like walk around, like be like, I'm the best person. Like there's someone always better than you. And like be humble because at the end of the day, there's no reason to be showing off. Like someone could be looking at you as a dancer as like, Oh my God, she's so amazing. Like, look at her. But then they're like, I hate her attitude. Like, that's just like, not what I want as like someone to be like, I don't want to be her. Cause like, I don't like her attitude, you know? So like being humble in everything you do is a big thing in sports, like huge, in my opinion. And people don't like hiring people who are not humble. People don't want exactly. to work. With them. And, exactly. Yeah. You know, and like you said too earlier about being a forever learner and understanding that there's people ahead of you, below you, at the same level as you. And that's all beautiful and amazing because you're the one living in your body and we should really only care about, you know, you and, and you being your own com- competitor, you're, you're competing against yourself. And instead of comparing to others and being a forever learner and understanding that, and I always think, why well, you not? Why would we want to stop it? Okay, I'm advanced. I'm good now. I'm not going to yeah. listen to any other critiques. I'm not going to read anymore, whatever it is. I mean, it, life is always evolving. You know, people are evolving. Society's evolving, changing. So we might as well be forever learners. Exactly. Like, there could always be like someone better than you and you don't know it. Just because they could be like, so like you look at them and you oversee them. Like, don't ever oversee someone or overlook anyone because at the end of the day, like, they could be, like, someone that's, like, so much more bigger and so much more than we all think. Like, I always tell the girls that I coach, I'm always telling them, I'm like, listen, like, whatever you do, like, don't stop working hard. Don't stop moving. Like, keep going. Like, there is, whether it's in school or in sports, like, do never, don't ever stop and being content where you are because you could get better. Stanford University. Harvard University, like the best players play at UCLA for water polo, best players play at like Stanford, USC, UCLA. And like, yet those girls don't stop improving. And they're at the highest level possible. The Olympians, like they're at the highest level possible and they keep improving because they know there could be someone that could come take their spot. And like, let's say you stop at where you're at. Everyone's going to keep going. They're not going to wait for you. Like you as an individual have to want to keep going. So in my opinion, that's like something that's really big. Yes, finding that motivation within yourself, whatever that is, to keep going. That is wonderful, Deanna. And I think from now on, we can take from this, from now on, whoever, whoever is watching, if we see someone that's better than us, we go, okay, this is awesome. I'm going to watch them, learn from them while still keeping that compassion for yourself. Would you say that, that's a big thing? Like for me, like water polo, I look at the Olympians and like I pick one or two players. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna follow her. Like I'm gonna follow her footsteps. I want to be like her, like as a person, as a player, like as a student. Like I want to be like her. So like picking one person and just following them is like there's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing bad with following people. Like you grow from that as a person and you learn to be humble because it's not all about you, you, you. You're learning from others and it's about like us. It's about like working together. We're united at the end of the day. So like making sure like you have that in the back of your head is very important to me. So you are such a great role model, Dana. And I was curious if you could give a couple qualities that make a good team player or a captain role model in sports or specifically for water polo too. Like the experiences I've had and the people I've seen and like the experiences I've seen, there is no picture perfect person. They could be the best person on the team. They could be the best person in your division or in your conference, but there's no picture perfect person because 
for me, I could see one player as like, oh my God, she's so amazing. She's the best role model ever. But like for my teammates, she'd be like, not for me. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't see her as that, you know, and not in a rude way. Just everyone has a different goal and a different level they want to reach. So um, in my opinion, like there's no picture perfect. Just finding that person for you individually that like you see as like a good role model. And everything is just always being humble. Like be humble in everything that you do, because in the world we live in today, everyone's just like, I'm the best, like so much competition that like, everyone's like, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. And it's like, let's all be humble. Like, yes, you're good. And I'm just going to try to get as good as you like, just trying to like reach that point. And personally with team captains, I believe there should not be ever a team captain in a team ever. And I believe that because a team captain, like they're lear- like a team captain is usually a player on the team and they're learning and evolving just like me. And that could put pressure on them and pull them back as a player, or it could not help the team because the team is going to have like some type of like disagreement because half the team could think she's a good team captain. The other half is like, no, like I think another person should be a team captain. So like when it comes to team captains or captains in general, I believe that there should be only one captain on the entire team. And it's obvious who it should be the head coach. Like the head coach should always be the captain of the team because they're the ones he or she are the ones who carry the team, who tell like who has the best insight on the sport or on the program who's the one that like leads everyone. Like they are the leader at the end of the day. At the end of the day, when you're in a game, you're not looking for your captain in the pool for like guidance. You're looking for your coach. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, you're the one who knows what to do. So in my opinion, like team captains um, bring a little bit more tension than it should be rather than it should just be obvious that there's one captain and it's the coach, the head coach, not assistant coaches and stuff, but like the head head coach. So I can see that 100%. And when I was a Laker girl, there wasn't a team captain. We didn't have that. So I really, and I think it was because of the exact reason that you're discussing right now. We didn't have a team captain. All of us were equal and we all learned from each other. And our captain was our head coach. Yeah. Like, I believe that's like the best thing because like voting for team captains and voting for this, it's basically, you have to look at it like this. It's like the presidential election. It divides everyone because everyone sees this person as the best president and everyone sees this person as the best president. So it brings a divide. And what does that divide bring into like arguments, fights, like um, people protesting. So like, it just like at the end of the day, it's like, it just brings a divide in everyone. And we don't want that because this is a team sport. This is an us. This is a we, and we don't want divide in that because that's just going to lead to tension and tension is going to lead to no bonding and no bonding is going to lead to like not the best performance in a game. And the best performance in the game is performed by athletes who have the best bond together because that is a huge impact in team sports, whether it's like you're playing water polo or you're dancing. So or you're playing basketball or whatever it is anything, like yeah. any sport it could be like a team sport where there's six people or it could be like a sport where like you perform individually but you have your team behind you so it could be like any or at work anything like there should not be a captain at work the only captain in the work is your boss and that's it so like why should we like have like a little image for one person And it just, I feel like it just brings divide in my opinion. So that's why I believe, that's what I believe in team captains and leaders. This is really unique to hear and interesting and so needed. So I thank you for that because it is very prevalent. There's a lot of tension and I'm pretty sure there's research on resiliency with athletes and captains and things like that. And how it's kind of like a domino effect on how, like you say, if the captain's not to par, then the team's not to par. And then, and it's one after the other falling, falling, falling. And like you said, if there's tension in the team, they're not going to play as well. Exactly. There is, there is psychology research behind that. It's like the sensation and perception about like your team and your sport and individual. Like, it's just like how you pursue something, how you see something, like what you believe in, like me, like back to what I said before, it's like, Someone could be a leader to me in my eyes, but to someone else, it's like, no, that's not my leader. Why? Because they probably don't get along with them as much because their goals and the way they play isn't the way they want to play. Like it's like, everyone is different. We're all different. We were all the same. Like 
there like it just wouldn't be right so like we're all different we all have different goals and mindsets in the way we think and the way we process things so like that's why when there's like teams there's not just one coach there's an assistant coach and sometimes another assistant coach because those three coaches they have different perspectives and mindsets in the ways they explain things and sometimes one coach could yell at a player and be like you need to do this 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 and then the other coach, the assistant coach could be like, okay, I'm going to draw it out and show you how we're supposed to do this. It's different like, ways of learning. Exactly. And it's because like this player, okay, she's good at being yelled at. It helps her. This player, she needs everything to be drawn out for. She's a visualizer. So like, it's just like how we are as people. Yes, exactly. How we are as people. And it sounds like the coaches, that's a really good tip for coaches is to kind of have that unique community within the team of, okay, this coach can do get this out of her and this coach can get this out of him and vice versa. And so that sounds like a really good coaching tip too. Yeah. And, oh. <laughs> I want to pass to the last thing was how do you deal with emotions and the emotions that you feel when you're playing a game? I'm sure you're feeling all types of things. And how do you get through it when you have um, those uncomfortable emotions? Um, Uncomfortable emotions happen a lot, especially when you're like, I've got the opportunity to experience like the state championship game being the finalist in that. So um, for like, for community college, it's like the CCCAA championship game for like universities, four years, it's the NCAA championship. It's like the biggest championship of the season. And I got the opportunity to experience that. And it's like, the emotions like fluctuate a lot. And it's just like, um, you, sometimes you get lost. You don't know how to deal with it. Cause you're like feeling this anger because you want to win. And then you're feeling this like fear of like, Oh my God, what if I make a mistake? So it's just balancing those emotions and sometimes accepting those emotions. You're like, I feel sad right now. Like I'm like, I feel scared right now. I feel nervous right now. Like accepting those emotions are the best way to like regulate them and to like get rid of them in a sense, because if you keep pushing them to the side, you're going to push them, you're going to push them, but they're going to come back or they're, you're going to keep pushing them. And it's like, you have a box and you keep pushing these like papers in the box. And like, at one point, the box isn't going to be able to hold these papers anymore. It's just going to burst. So that's like one thing. And then another thing was having your family in the stands. Like sometimes like your loved ones, just looking at them for a second, like, I'm going to play for you today. Like I'm playing for you. I'm playing for my teammates. I'm playing for my coaches. Like, and like looking at, like, look at the positive and the outcome. Never like, look, like everyone has dealt with negative outcomes and negative situations. And it's just, you got to find that positive in it because everything happens for a reason. And it's just like, for me, when I'm in the pool, the most important person when I'm playing any game or practicing is the person that's right next to me. That's the most important person to me, whether I'm in class, at work, in the pool, um, at home. The most important person to me is the person next to me because I want to make sure I have their back. I want to make sure I can help them in any way. They're standing next to me for various reasons. They're playing next to me for various reasons. So like, just like accepting those feelings and finding what helps you like for me, knowing that like my family was watching me when I was playing um, up north. Um, being at like the uh, championship game for Chapman and knowing my family was up in the stands, like little things like that. So um, accepting emotions and just finding like the little happiness and the little things that make you happy personally. And this distress tolerance is the, the, what you mentioned about accepting that emotion and sitting with it and becoming comfortable in the discomfort. And over time, like you mentioned, the feelings will subside and you'll, yeah. and whatever emotion, uncomfortable thing you're feeling, it'll subside when you just say accepting, acceptance and release. And exactly, a, yes, it's a lot of DBT therapy is a lot of um, acceptance and release and distress tolerance and tolerating that stress and sitting with it. Okay. I feel it. Maybe even like point out where it is in your body that you feel it, your chest. Normally that's what it is for me, your gut, your head and say, okay, I accept it. I feel you there. I can tolerate this emotion, you know, telling yourself those exactly. things. 
and positive things also like for you, it works with the family and for someone else, like we talked about, everyone's different. It might be something else and whatever works for you is what will work. Exactly. So like, you just have to find what works for you. Cause like no one is going to, not everyone's going to have the same thing work for them. Like I know a player that I coach for her, what helps her is just talking about what she's going through. Like having like just a little talk back and forth that helps her. Another girl could be like me, like looking in the stand, seeing my family. Another person could be like, okay, I practice every day. I know what I'm doing. Like I can do this. Like, I don't know why I'm nervous. Like just talking to yourself mentally, you know, another person could be like my teammates have my back. I know my coaches have my back, so I'm fine, you know? So everyone's different. It's just finding what works for you at the end of the day. And like, really just like researching that in your own self, you know, like at practice, be like, oh, if I'm nervous, does this work for me? And like at a game that's not high intense, be like, oh, this works for me. I should like keep this in mind, you know, for when I am stressed out or under pressure. So yes, this is wonderful. And Deanna, I wanted to ask you, what are you doing now to train for the Olympics? And so I'm taking a little bit of um, a little gap here just because I've been training since 2014 and I haven't stopped until this year. So starting at Loma Linda University, their program being so their clinical psychology program being so intense this year, I'm really focusing on um, training in a different aspect. So instead of physically, I am training, um, just not as intense as someone would anticipate for someone who's training for that type of level. Um, so what I'm doing right now is focusing on school because academics is number one, like for student athletes, student comes before athlete at the end of the day. And if you're not a student, you're not an athlete. So that's like the number one priority. So for me, school is like number one in my book always. Um, so I'm focusing this year on Loma Linda like program and like studying and everything. And I'm coaching at Fullerton College. So having a coach perspective is actually more beneficial than I thought and like helping me see like little tactics that like as an athlete you don't really look you kind of like look past you're like oh like this is nothing you know so like back to like looking at the little things um um so I'm doing that coaching with that and just like watching film a lot like learning like my weaknesses how I can make them stronger Um, just like mentally like getting stronger as well is like a huge impact like a lot of people don't like that's why I also love psychology so much is like it's something that is not like visual to the naked eye that someone could be struggling with it could be something like totally up here so I'm mentally getting stronger and like being smarter in the game like trying to figure like doing little tactics to make me quicker in the pool um so just like that's what I'm doing right now and just getting ready so I could play my last two years at another for a year before like the next Olympics and then just train from there. So, and then every now and then, like the girls I coach at Fullerton, I jump in with them and work out with them every now and then. And I work out every day on my own. So just like learning here and there and just kind of like also what's helping me with this. And I didn't think about it and like notice it until recently is I'm like hungry to play. So I'm letting that build up a lot as much as I can. So then when I go out there and I play, it's like, firecracker so (laughs) yeah that's that's actually a phenomenon in sports if someone's like out because they're injured or or out for a while it builds that hunger up and so it makes you actually perform better because you have that extra passion and drive in you because of the lack of it in the past and or of what led up to it yes and and I'm so stoked for you and I, thank you. Thank you. I'm wishing you the best of luck. And I'm, I really admire that you're allowing yourself to take a break. And yeah, just, even though it's a break, it's, you're still working out a ton and you're coaching and you're going to school. It's not a, it's not a break, but, but you know what I mean? Kind of like from the really, really excruciating workouts and situations exactly. like that. I think yeah, no, it's like, it's helped me a lot. And like for a lot of athletes, like sometimes like, no, I can't take a break. I can't take a break. It's like your body and your mind, honestly, like it's sometimes it needs a break and like not a lot of people. And I'm like one to like, kind of like, I should not be saying this because I'm the one It's like, no, 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 go, 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 go. It's like all about go, go, go. But like, sometimes like you really need to like take a step back. Cause like a lot of us are like 
living in the past or living in the future. And like, we all forget to like live in the moment, whether it's in water polo, whether in school, whether it's just life in general, it's like, can you believe it? In like a couple months, we're going to be in 2022. Like, when did that happen? Like time just goes by so fast. And it's like, we really need to take a step back and just like mentally get stronger, physically get stronger. Like if I have any injuries to like try to like heal those injuries, um, just like taking a step back sometimes is better than like going. Cause like if I kept going right now, I feel like I would be weaker mentally, physically, because sometimes you get drained and like, you don't have the time to like stop and be like, Oh my God, I'm so drained. By the time you realize that it's kind of too late. So just like taking a step back is like a huge thing that I learned recently. So that's yeah. self care, self care. It's huge. And it's look over self care a lot. And we need to like really emphasize on that now. Yes. And I feel I agree. I feel like society is very go, go, go on to the next on to the next what's on your resume and, you know, above, above, above. And really, we can take a step back and think, wow, look at all the things I have done already. And oh, I'm also human and studies prove that we perform better when we give ourselves break and exactly. enjoy things. We're actually supposed to have like at least 30 minutes of something that we enjoy, whether it's like watching TV, doing this <laughs> or, exactly. or working out, whatever it is. And whatever it is for you, like for some people, it could be like getting a good meal, sitting in front of your TV in your pajamas watching your favorite movie and eating another person could be working out that's their outlet another person could be like yoga or hanging out with their friends or hiking getting away from like social media and everything like it's different for everyone it's just finding what's for you and like surrounding yourself by people who reflect your future not your past and reflect who you want to be and not like what you were in the past like those two things are like very important in my opinion So like, just like having those in the back of your head is like very important. I 100% agree. And George Mumford, he's a, he's a mindfulness meditation teacher for athletes. And in one of his books, it talks about being in the present moment. And he says something like the future hasn't happened yet. And the past is done. It's gone. We can accept it and release. So we might as well live in the moment, you know, and it's harder said than done, but having that mindset, like you kind of mentioned seems to have really helped you and to hopefully help others who watch this. Hopefully. Yeah. Because like, in my opinion, like when you go out and do anything like in the present, like do everything you want to do at hundred percent, don't have regrets after you do, after you play a game, after you go take a test, like don't have regrets. Cause at the end of the day, like if you have a regret or like, we don't know, like, for example, like my last game before COVID, like the pandemic happened and they shut us down. Like I regretted so many things I didn't do in that game. And it's just like, we never know what's going to happen. We never know when it's going to be our last practice, our last day at work, our last like day at school, seeing our friends, our last game. Like we don't, we cannot tell the future and we don't know what's going to happen ever. So like, don't live with regret and don't do anything at like 50% and then later wishing you did more. So it's just kind of like living in the moment and do everything at hundred percent and just be happy with what you did. Just accept what you did. Cause at the end of the day, like we're all human and we just like have to just like go, like sometimes you just have to go with the flow and just like stop like having your mind's on a Ferris wheel and it keeps going. Sometimes you just have to like stop that Ferris wheel. Yeah. Absolutely. And just realizing we're enough as we are just us in our flesh and with our personalities and, and all we do, we're enough as we are just getting out of bed in the morning is hard enough or cooking or whatever it is, driving, whatever it is, things that, that we really kind of use our automatic pilot in us to do. That's a lot of energy and things. And so being who we are is enough anyway. Exactly. Like accept who you are and like accept how you are. That's all I say. Like, don't like look like I have to be like her. I have to be like him. I have to like do this like them. Like stop comparing yourself. You are you for a reason and you are unique for a reason. And you can be helpful to someone that you don't know that sees you as being helpful. Like you could be like a God in someone's eyes 
when like in your own eyes, you're like, I'm literally the worst athlete in the world. I'm literally the worst person. At, like you could like, we all like look down on ourselves so much and in so many different ways. It could be like at work as an athlete, um, as an individual body image, um, the way like your like face looks, your hair is like anything. Like we all look down on ourselves so much and it's like, we're not accepting who we are and accepting how we are. So like, it's just like, you really got to emphasize on things. And especially nowadays, because like, if someone finds a weakness in you, they're going to pinpoint it because they want to put you down because they want to get past you. Going back to the competition level, just being so high. Yes. And that's how those people regulate their own self-esteem is by putting other people down and it's horrible. And you almost feel bad for those people because really they're hurting inside. And, and like you said, um, to be more compassionate towards ourselves. I love that. And Deanna, it was amazing talking with you today and I am truly so grateful and I cannot wait to post this and for people Thank to hear. Thank you so me. much. I, I knew we would get such great deep topics. I could talk to you all day about this. It's been really hard for me not to go in depth more with these topics because I know our little psych minds are just going. And they're just like, you like, you, it's like everything you learned is like playing into effect and it's that Ferris wheel again. It's like, you can keep going. It's like when you have a passion for something, you just keep going and going and going. And it's like later you're like, okay, it's been a while. We should stop. Like, or like someone who doesn't understand it. They're like, what's wrong with these two crazy people and what's going on right now. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you and your time and just everything that you're doing. This is very beneficial to so many students, athletes, just people. So thank you so much for having me in your time. Of course, Deanna, your words of wisdom are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>